everyone. Today I am wanting to talk to you about something called closed procedures. Frequently talked about within SLP circles, but might not be as well known outside of them. Closed procedures might also be referred to as sentence completion tasks. And I can tell you that when I was an SLP before I had apraxia training and a daughter with apraxia, I did use closed procedures, but definitely not with as much frequency or intention that I do now. So pretty much every one of my sessions will probably involve some sort of closed procedure. And I like to think of them almost as magic. And I say that because they seem so simple, but are so effective for almost every kid that I have. And that doesn't mean I get them talking with these. This simply means that I feel like I can get them to at least attempt to say things. Because as speech language pathologists, we're really stuck when the child isn't saying anything. We can fix and correct all day long as long as the child is saying something. But it's really hard when they are nonverbal and they are completely shut down and adverse to really attempting to say anything. So this is my magic bullet. I had an, I'll tell you a quick story just to convince you a little further before I explain what these are. About a year ago, I had an SLP come in here with a daughter who has um, almost turned two. And her mother, like I remember I was doing with my daughter, was trying everything and anything to get her daughter to talk, working with her every day, and she, of course, had read her stories and sang songs and uh, that she'd done language stimulation and she played with her and still her daughter really wasn't speaking and was considered pre-verbal when she came to me. So I told this mom, I modeled closed procedures in a variety of activities through the entire session, and I told this mom to go home this next week and work on those and do exactly that through the whole week. And that when I saw her next time, I had a feeling that her daughter would be at least attempting to say more things than she had been, you know, as of recently. So she looked at me skeptically, <laughs> you know, she'd been trying everything. And she said, I don't know, Laura, I really doubt it, but I will do it and we'll see what happens. And literally it was the bridge that filled the gap from her child being pre-verbal to becoming verbal. So I'm sure you all want to know, what are these? So a closed procedure is a way to have the child fill in a blank. So for example, um, the first way to do it would be with familiar repetitive books. So I have a few of them right here. Some of my favorites for early on are Five Little Monkeys, um, Panda Bear, Panda Bear, What Do You See? Actually, really any of the brown bear books. Um, I like Panda because in Apraxia, that Panda is a nice consonant, what we call a consonant vowel, consonant vowel word, but um, definitely all the brown bear books um, work for that. And then, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't include Pete the Cat. So how this would look is, let's say if I was doing Panda Bear, the child is familiar with this book. They've been read this book. Ideally, they need to be familiar with the book that you're reading and going to attempt to use the closed procedure with. And so in this case, um, what you would do is you would read it this way. Panda Bear, Panda Bear, what do you and you would pause, and you're waiting for the child to fill in really anything and to say anything. If they don't, that's fine. You don't wanna sit there and say, say C, because I will tell you, every SLP that works in early intervention knows the biggest way to shut a child down is to say, say this. <laughs> I had a mentor once that told me, children don't get in a power struggle with a child because they can control two things when they go potty and when they talk to you. And so you don't wanna get into, uh, the whole idea is to not get into a power struggle with the child. So it's fine, if they don't respond, that's okay. You fill in for them. See, I see a bald eagle soaring by. And again, you might pause. And I love this one, cause me is a nice, easy, first that M is an e early developing sound. Me is a nice, simple syllable shape. 
And again, if they don't say anything, you allow the pause, fill in the blank and move on. And you would continue in this fashion throughout the entire book. If they do fill in the blank, when they do, <laughs> whatever they said should be met with cheers and excitement and no criticism. We are so excited that you attempted to say that. Yes, good try. And that would be the start of it. So as you go along, of course, you can give the child maybe more feedback as they start to trust you, as they start to say more things. But at least initially, when we're really trying to get children to talk, that closed procedure within a book like that is amazing. And again, we are cheering with whatever they say at first. And you know, shaping it can come later. So the next way you can do it is within songs. I wish I would have known this when my daughter was little because I sang songs with her nonstop. All the nursery rhyme songs, you know, Will's on the bus, Baby Bumblebee, um, Itsy Bitsy Spider, I'm a Little Teacup. I mean, it goes on, right? So some of my favorites to do in therapy are singing these familiar songs. And if the child is not familiar with them, they need to be familiar with them. So at first you're just gonna be singing it until the child's familiar with them. And then once they have the familiarity, let's say if we're doing Itsy Bitsy Spider, we would use a closed procedure like this. We would sing with them and say, the itsy bitsy spider when pausing waiting for the child to fill in something anything knowing that if they do we are going to cheer and say yes you tried to say up or if they actually said up we would tell them yay I heard you say up and then keep going the water spout waiting pausing they don't give it to you that's fine down came the rain and washed the spider pausing, waiting. Eventually, I will tell you, they are expecting it. And so many times, most times, I honestly can't think of when this has not worked with me, um, that they wouldn't at least try. I'm not saying it's accurate, but that they wouldn't at least try to say something. I can't really think of a time that it hasn't worked. Um, and so, you know, as I go along with it. So um, that's how we would go from there with the songs. Any song like that is how I would, um, is then how I continue singing and cueing the songs. And then, you know, as they get further and further along in therapy, let's say you can really shape um, one, you know, you, not shape, but let's say they are coming out with one word, then you can pause before two words to the end or three words. And I did this with Monkeys on the Bed um, with my daughter once I learned this. So, you know, First, she had she literally was only putting two, maybe three words together at the time. She knew this book, and there was a point, and I have videos in my workshops where I stop, and she can say, <laughs> you know, I say, um, Mama called the doctor, and the doctor said, and she can say approximations that go, na ma ma e a e a be. She says that whole thing, you guys. And literally, spontaneously, she could only say two to three words put together. Um, so, super powerful strategy. I think everyone should be using it um, to get that pre the child from pre-verbal to verbal. It's called my magic trick for me, and they really do work for apraxia. And there is actually science behind it. Um, okay, maybe I shouldn't say science, but with apraxia, automatic speech. They do, they do say in the literature that automatic speech, meaning speech that just kind of comes out, is easier than volitional speech. And volitional speech is when we are putting those demands on the child saying, say this, say this, say this. And that volitional you know, aspect of apraxia is hard. And that automatic speech is easier. So knowing that automatic speech is easier, using the closed procedure is a natural bridge to get automatic speech because they already are expecting the word that's going to happen. You're allowing time for them to come out, pop out with a word automatically. So I think too that direct demands on a child, especially in children with any speech disorder really, Direct demands raise anxiety, it raises pressure, and you know, think about us, who, um, those of us who don't have a speech disorder. When demands are put on you, extra pressure, you are going to feel more anxiety. So I think this just makes sense. I want everyone to know about it. The other two things I will say is that you can do these with rote sayings. Ready, set, 
and you can do that while you're playing, waiting for the child to fill in the blank. Other ways to do it would just be if you have a routine, let's say you have a bedtime routine or some other routine in your household. Every time you go up the stairs, you sing some little song like, we're going up, up and going to bed or something, you know, and you can, ha you can create your own closed procedures from routines that you have and sayings that you have with your children. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for tuning in and everyone have a good day.